Lift up your right hand. Father, bless your word today. Let not one person live here the same. In Jesus' name. I speak briefly on the subject. The blessing and supernatural abundance. The blessing and supernatural abundance. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandment. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. The subject is the blessing and supernatural abundance. Our objective is to understand the relationship between the blessing and supernatural abundance. By way of introduction, it is important to note that supernatural abundance is a department of the blessing. That was why he said, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. That was why he said in Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich. It maketh rich. So supernatural abundance, wealth, riches, is a department of the blessing of God. Throughout scripture, blessed people exhibited the riches of God. Blessed people exhibited the wealth of God. Do we have examples? Yes. Number one, Abraham. Of course, you know in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, God called Abraham and God told him he would bless him and make him a blessing. Then in Genesis chapter 13, verse 2, we saw how Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. Then in Genesis chapter 24, verse 1, we saw how Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord blessed him in all things. So Abraham is number one example of somebody blessed by God and decorated with wealth. Example number two, Isaac. In Genesis chapter 25 and in verse 11, we saw Isaac. It came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac. And Isaac dwelt by the well. Lehi Roy. God blessed Isaac. And what was the outcome of the blessing? In Genesis chapter 20. Sorry. Genesis chapter 26. Verse 12 to 14. God blessed him. The man sowed in that land. And he received in the same year. An hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and a great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Can somebody say amen? I see an Abraham coming out of this service this morning. I see an Isaac coming out of this service this morning. If you were the one, you would say the loudest, Amen. Amen. So we saw Abraham blessed and God enriched him. Isaac was blessed and God enriched him. Number three, Jacob. Jacob was blessed. 
Genesis chapter 28 verse 1. We saw the blessing of God and Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. So he called him and blessed him. Verse 3, verse 3. He said, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give you the blessing of Abraham. Give to thee the blessing of Abraham and to thy seed with thee that you may inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. So, Isaac dropped on Jacob the blessing of Abraham. And what did that blessing produce? Genesis chapter 30, verse 40, 42 to 43. Genesis 30, 42 to 43. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban. And the stronger Jacob. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and made servants and men servants and camels and asses. Jacob was blessed and the blessing exploded in wealth. Any other example, any other uh, scripture? Genesis 32 verse 9 to 10. Look at what Jacob said. Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac. The Lord will say it unto me. Return unto your country. And to your kindred. And I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy. Of the least of all the mercies. And of all the truth. Which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my stick. My staff. I passed over this Jordan. When I was passing. 21 years ago. All I carried was one stick. And now I am returning. I have become two bands. Two troops. From the blessing. The blessing. Of the Lord. It maketh rich. It processes it unto riches. And added no sorrow. That was Abraham. Blessed by God. Isaac and Jacob. They were all blessed by God. And enriched by God. Example number four. Job. Job. Job chapter 1 verse 1. The Bible said there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. That man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she asses and a very great household. So that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. What was his secret? Verse 10. And Satan said, Has thou not made an, an head about him? Does Job fear thee for nothing? Has thou not made an head about him? And about his house? And about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands. And his substance is increased in the land. You bless the work of his hands. That was a man blessed. And everything around him exploded. Finally, example number five, David. David was the one speaking to us in Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3. He was talking from example. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted. Is, you might as well read, blessed is the David that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. He see the seed of David shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of David shall be blessed. I don't have the time to read for you. First Chronicles chapter 29. Maybe you place it from the Living Bible version. Verse 1 to 5. How David was blessed of God. First Chronicles chapter 29 verse 1. All the way to verse 5. Then King David turned. To the entire assembly and said, my son Solomon, whom God has chosen to be the next king of Israel, is still young and inexperienced. And the work ahead of him is enormous. For the temple he will build is not just another building, for it is for the Lord God himself. Using every resource at my command, I have gathered as much as I could for building it. Enough gold, enough silver, enough bronze, enough iron, enough wood, great quantities of onyx, other precious stones, costly jewels and marble. 
And now because of, the devo of my devotion to the temple of God, I am giving all of my own private treasures to aid in the construction. This is in addition to the building materials I have already collected. These personal contributions consist of millions of dollars of gold from offer. Huge amounts of silver to be used for overlaying the walls. What a blessed man. It will also be used for the articles made of gold and silver and for the artistic decoration. Now then, who will follow my example? Who will give himself and all that he has to the Lord like this? Beloved, the blessing of the Lord, it made Abraham rich. It made Isaac rich. It made Jacob rich. It made Job rich. And it made David rich. It will make you wealthy. That amen is too feeble. Shout a believer's amen. I want to say something and then we'll go quickly. The blessing makes wealthy. But not every wealthy person is blessed. No. The blessing can connect with wealth. But wealth does not equal the blessing. Hello? There are wealthy people who don't know God at all. You can't call that wealth a blessing. There are even ritual, ritualists who try to make money from human blood. You can't call it the blessing. So what I want to advertise to you is not wealth, but the blessing of God. Don't seek to be rich. Seek to be blessed. And when you have been blessed, you won't be looking for riches extra. Don't struggle for the money of the world. Don't struggle for the gold of the earth. Struggle for the God who owns the gold. When you catch him, you won't struggle for gold extra. Someone say a loud amen. Say a louder amen. What is the difference between wealth that is a product of the blessing of God and wealth that did not come from the blessing of God? Are you ready for the difference? Because some people argue and say, oh, we know people who don't even care about going to church. They don't even care about what it means to give to anybody or to God to anything. And yet, they can be called millionaires or billionaires or whatever it is. What is the difference between the wealth that is a product of the blessing of God and wealth that is not connected to the blessing of God. Number one, wealth from the blessing of God is sorrow free. It is peaceful. That was why the Bible said, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it. Wealth from the blessing of God is sorrow free it is peaceful it is wealth you can have and you can sleep the other one is not guaranteed sorrow freedom it is even clearly stated in first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. 
which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. There are many sorrowful millionaires. Sorrowful billionaires. Sorrowful money men. There are those who have to eliminate their friends so that only them can retain the money. Wealth from the blessing of God is sorrow free. It is peaceful. Is, is it making sense to you at all? One day, a man was with a, a millionaire, or maybe what you might call a billionaire in our context here, and they were talking. And, and this brother suddenly fell asleep. He was dozing. And the man opened his mouth. I said, what? What are you doing? Sleeping. Easily like this. What did he say? Easily like this. He said, I envy you. I wish I can be able to sleep easy like this. That's millionaire, billionaire. He said, no matter what I drink, I'm unable to sleep up to two hours any night. He has money under pressure. And you are just dozing like this in the daytime. Wealth from God is sorrow free. Number two, wealth from the blessing of God attracts the protection of God. Wealth that is from the blessing of God attracts the protection of God. That is how I want to call it. It is divine provision with divine protection. Divine provision with divine protection. It is supernatural prosperity with supernatural security. Job chapter 1 verse 10, we just read it. Where Satan was telling God, you made the hedge about Job. You made the hedge about his house. You made the hedge about all that he has. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, 11. He said, bring the tithes into the storehouse. Prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer, the waster. He cannot just enter into your field and waste your resources. Am I communicating? God said, I don't only provide, I protect. I don't only deliver what is yours to you, I defend what I give you. So if God has given you his possession, he also gives you his protection. Am I communicating at all? It is not like that with the rule of the world. So you can, God cannot give you money and a wicked bastard agent of the devil wastes you because of the money. No. There are worldly rich people that are not, they, they, they can't sleep in one place in the night. People must not know where they are. When we came into Abuja Newly, I came in touch with a young man. If he wants to come to this place, he might park his car at um, Lube Police Station or somewhere and trek to come here. People must not know where he is. I asked him, I said, what happened? He said, Somebody met him and said, they have given me contract to kill you. The person met him and said, I am only waiting for the right time. That is, met him in person. And he was so afraid that he couldn't even report him to police. So he will park his car somewhere. And he's just, he was just starting with little, little things in town. Not that he was a terribly rich, but they were already looking for him to kill him. Until we met. And then that embargo was lifted. 
And then I asked him later, I said, where are the people looking for you? He said, me too, I don't know where they are. That is, when you get it and God was not involved, you, you can be at the mercy of anybody and anything. That is, God cannot give you money and you went to the village and you are building a house in the village and they kill you because of the house. They can kill others that got their money by another means, but not the one that God blessed. In the name of Jesus, I announce to somebody here, divine protection is coming your way. Amen. Say it louder, amen. Is God speaking to anybody at all? Wealth from the blessing of God attracts the protection of God. But the other one, you cannot guarantee any protection. Pro Proverbs 23, verse 4 to 5. Proverbs 23, 4 to 5. He said, labor not to be rich. Don't struggle the way other people are. All they are talking about is money, 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 money. Seize from your own wisdom. Will you set your eyes upon that which is not? If I didn't give it to you, it doesn't exist. For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward the heaven. That is why some rich people hold on to money so much. Because they are not sure of anything. You know that in the, in the foreign lands, one lawsuit can wipe out somebody out of business. Somebody claimed damages from your medical practice that you did the wrong surgery, the scar wasn't correct. Or you did this and that and he claimed $25 million and court awarded them the damages. That's the business closed. When God blesses, he protects. Number three, Wealth from the blessing of God attracts divine health from God. It is divine wealth with divine health. It attracts divine health from God. It is divine wealth with divine health. Third John verse 2. I wish above all things that you prosper and then be in health. I am not just planning to give you prosperity. I, I, I'm also giving you vitality to prosper and be in health. I am not going to give you money you cannot enjoy. Did you hear what I just said? God is saying, I am not going to give you money you cannot enjoy. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 to 18. See what he said? Charge them that are rich in this world that they, should, they, that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living God who giveth us richly all things not to endure but to enjoy. That they do good. That they be rich in good works ready to distribute, willing to communicate. He said, I'm not blessing you for you to waste the money on costly disease. Hello? I am giving you prosperity. I'm giving you vitality. I want to give you wealth. I want to give you health. And I stand against every demon that is causing your money to be siphoned through disease and ill health. To it is arrested shout the loudest amen John D. Rockefeller was a man truly blessed began tithing from one dollar when he was about 53 years old he got a terminal disease at age 53. He got a terminal disease and it was time to go, literally. And then he sent and emptied his account and distributed resources to charitable organizations towards God at age 53. And God said, 
You are not permitted to die. He gave him 46 more years. Hello? 53. He gave him 44 more years until he died at the age 97. Or a robber 75 years old had a terminal heart disease. In African context, 75 is already old. He told his wife, empty my account. Give all the money to God. Tell him I'm not ready to go yet. He died at age 90 what? 91. That is 16 more years. If God gave it, it is not to be wasted on disease and disaster. I prophesy to somebody here, you shall fulfill your days. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Say after me, I shall fulfill my days. I shall fulfill my days. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody getting anything from here at all? And that is inconsistent with, is, is, is inconsistent with Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 41 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he shall be blessed upon the earth. And you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The, word, the Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. God will make his bed in sickness. That is, in sickness he will say, stand up out of the bed. I want to dress the bed. And I'm not dressing it for you to lie down back there. Hallelujah. Wealth from the blessing of God attracts divine health. Number four. Wealth from the blessing of God comes along with the greatness of offsprings. It comes along call it generational greatness. That is we saw it already in Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. The person that is blessed of the Lord, his seed shall be mighty. Hmm. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. When God blesses you, you are not permitted to give birth to useless children. The covenant is a holistic package. You see some ungodly People who are in the occult and they are billionaires. Then their children transmit the occultism to cultism. Campus. No. Oh. The blessing of God covers children wealth, children's welfare. It covers the you are not permitted to give birth to children that take last in the class. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying here? Yeah? If the devil is tempting you with the opposite, fight it. If the devil is challenging you with an opposite experience, reject it. It's the blessing of the Lord. My children are great. My offsprings are blessed. They are not permitted to be challenged or troubled. Troublesome or troubling children. Somebody say amen. And finally, wealth from the blessing of God comes with transgenerational transfer. Transgenerational transfer. That is, that wealth, that blessing is not permitted to finish in your lifetime. It is wealth that is transferred from generation to generation. It is not designed to finish in the lifetime of the blessed. 
Proverbs 13, 22. He said, a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Genesis 22, verse 15 to 17. God was speaking to Abraham and telling him, 22 I said, telling him how he will bless him and bless his seed after him. Somebody say amen. So God blessed Abraham. He transferred to Isaac. And from Isaac, it went to Jacob, to Joseph. And the Israelites are on earth today. From David, it went to Solomon. From Solomon to Rehoboam. And then all the way to King Hezekiah, King Asa. All those kings in the land. Any king you know that did well in Israel came out of David. That is 95% of them. Because it is transgenerational. In my own life, as short as it is so far, I have seen big millionaires who died and their resources died with them. Am I communicating? Their children drank it up in alcohol. They sold all the properties. Sold everything. And there's nothing to show. See such in our plenty. Even in this country, owners of all manner of things, Billionaires and well-known names. Today, nothing is traceable to their existence. Ay, 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 ay. But if it came from God, like John D. Rockefeller, the Rockefeller Foundation is still on earth till today. Servicing needs around the earth. If it is covenant world, it is not finishable with time. What if the children are dummies? Yes, the same covenant world will give you wisdom. Wisdom that you will impart on the children that will cause them to transfer and perpetuate the world. Somebody say amen. Who is trusted to receive that blessing from God? You see, so when they say, oh, uh, there are people who don't know God and yet they have money. Tell them it's not that kind of money I'm talking about. It's not that kind of wealth we are talking about. Tell them, it's not, I'm not even looking for wealth. I'm looking for the blessing. I'm not even looking for money. I am looking for God. I am looking for the blessing of God. And if I have the blessing of God, I will have everything that goes with the blessing. Somebody shout, yes! And thank God today is Blessing Sunday. As we take that communion in a few minutes time, the same blessing that took Abraham to where he went will come upon you. Very, very quickly. What are the secrets of the blessing? Number one, complete donation and yieldedness of life, of one's life to God. The complete donation and the complete donation of one's life to God. You saw what David said in the Living Bible Translation. Of First Corinthians chapter 29, verse 3, the last part. Who among you can give himself and everything he has to God like I have done? Who will give himself and all that he has to the Lord like me? Who? The complete donation of one's life to God. Where you relinquish all claims to your own life, you relinquish it unto God. Where God owns you. And decides what to do with you per time. That was what happened to Abraham in Genesis 12. Verse 1 to 3. And I, I, you, should, you should put those scriptures I mentioned now. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. And 1 Chronicles 29 verse 3. The Living Bible Version. Abraham, come. Yes, sir. I, I possess you. I own you. Yes, sir. I'm going to determine where you go and how. Yes, sir. When you come to the point where you say... I don't own, own my life. You own my life. Then you will be so decorated until people will be shocked. What did you do for God? Number two, sensitivity and attention to the voice of God. Sensitivity. God spoke Abraham head. Get out of your father's house to a land I will show you. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 1 to 2 if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God 
all these blessings will come upon you. When you come to the point where you are not trying to live your life, but Lord, what are you saying? Let me say this as we go. How many of you know that your money is not in every business? You must listen to God and know where to pour your energy. Where to invest your resources. You don't do things because everybody is doing. You do it because God said to talk to you. Whether in the dream of the night or by any means. Sensitivity and attention to the voice of God. It's a secret of the blessing. So many people are so frustrated because they are trying to do what everybody is doing. And it's, it's taking them nowhere. Number three, unconditional obedience to divine instruction. You are sensitive and you heard what God asked you to do and then you said yes to God. Saying yes to God on all grounds. Not questioning his instructions. Yes, Lord. The word is yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Unconditional obedience to the voice of God. We saw that in Genesis 12, 13, 1, 1 to 3 and Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2. Deuteronomy 28 1 to 2. Unconditional obedience. Somebody say amen. Everybody who negotiates divine instruction is settled for earthly frustration. You negotiate it. Unconditional obedience. Number four. Unlimited generosity towards God. Unlimited. Where you don't have a claim on anything as your own. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Abraham gave up everything to, fo to follow God. Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 5. Give me your son, your only son Isaac. And Genesis chapter 14 verse 18 to 20. Abraham gave the tithes of all. I read Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Genesis 22, 1 to 5. And Genesis 14, 18 to 20. Call it addiction to covenant practice. Holding nothing back. Nobody is begging you to pay tight. Nobody is begging you to give offerings. As a person, you have grown beyond the realm of ordinary tithing. You have grown beyond to the realm of massive giving. Somebody say a loud amen. A louder amen. It's not possible for anybody to, not to be a giver and expect to be blessed. It's not possible. Addiction. No covenant practice. Number five and final is existence as a blessing to the needy. Existence as a blessing to the needy. He said, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. That was Genesis 12, 2 to 3, where we read, I will bless you and you shall be a blessing. Then Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3, blessed is the one that has pity on the poor. And then Genesis chapter 14, verse 14, we saw Abraham taking care of hired servants that were born in his house. Genesis 14 and in verse 14. I welcome you today to the realm of this blessing that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. You want the blessing from God? Donate your life completely. Then be sensitive to his voice and then unconditionally obey divine instruction and then unlimited generosity be a giver and of course exist as a blessing to the needy. The Lord bless his word. Lift up your right hand and appreciate God for what you have just received. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Jesus. And I prophesy to everyone here today, the blessing comes upon you today and the curse is reversed. In Jesus' precious name.